Danny White is making a change. Kelly Harper is out as head coach of the Lady Vols. What could be next, but why this was the right move. More on that and everything else here on a Tuesday, Locked On Vols. You are Locked On Vols, your daily podcast on the Tennessee Volunteers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, good Tuesday morning, everybody. Welcome to Locked On Vols. I'm Eric Kane, your host here at the show. Appreciate you for being here, making Locked On Vols your first listen each and every day. Shout out to everydayers. Couldn't do this show without you. Going to get to tons of your questions on literally a little bit of everything in segments two and three. Uh, but first, we're going to talk Kelly Harper here in segment number one. You can watch, listen, follow, subscribe, all that for free wherever you get your podcast, And of course, by subscribing to Locked On Vols YouTube channel. Uh, big show coming up today. And And we'll kind of start right here. Um, I never want to celebrate when a coach gets fired, Um, especially when, I mean, this is just my opinion. Everybody's different. Everybody's entitled to their own opinion. But, you know, just human nature, I don't feel like we should celebrate when people lose their jobs. That's just my opinion. But when you're in this industry and you get close to these people and you're around these people and you work with these people kind of on a daily basis, you know, you see see their passion for it. and, And you see their work that goes into their jobs. And it's unfortunate whenever you see somebody get let go. And I'm not saying that's the case for Kelly Harper. I don't know Kelly Harper. I don't cover the Lady Vols. And that's kind of where I'll start this conversation. I'm not a Lady Vols expert. I'm not going to try to pretend to be a Lady Vols expert. That's just not me. But we are going to talk and we're leading the show off with Lady Vols because this is a huge story. It's a massive story. Um, But yeah, I don't cover Lady Vols. So I'm not trying to act like this is the case where I was close to Kelly Harper, but um, this was the right move. It was for a number of different reasons. And I'll kind of lean into this and I'll I'll tell you this right now. Danny White making this move shows that he's not satisfied with where the program is. He's not okay with letting it slide. He's not okay with mediocrity. So by making this move now, it shows me that he's going to go all in and go and hire an established coach. Now, whether that is male, female, whether that's from inside the Lady Ball family or outside the Lady Ball family, I don't know. I don't think any of that matters. This is going to be Danny White's White's, uh, decision to make, and I think he's going to go out and find the right person for this job. Now, a lot of the times, too, you don't make a move unless you have a short list of candidates that you really, really like. Candidates that you might have a connection with in years past, um, so on and so forth. So I'll be intrigued to see kind of the, the pace of this hire and also the direction, obviously that he decides to go in. Now, remember with the transfer portal and everything, just like any other sport, you want to be moving quickly, but you want to make sure you get it right. Um, but I do think this is the right move and it's, it's unfortunate because I'm sure that nobody in the world wanted this to be more successful than Kelly Harper. I mean, Kelly Harper won three national championships at Tennessee. Kelly Harper was an All-American. Kelly Harper, you know, bleeds orange and white. That's who she is. She loves this program. And that's the risk you always take as an athletic director or as in a university when you hire a former player. So many people, you know, during the numerous coaching changes over the years, over the last couple of decades, decade and a half, really, for football, saying, well, go get T. Martin. Bring T. Martin home. And my, my favorite is, go get Peyton Manning. Won't Peyton Manning want to come and coach quarterbacks and coach the offensive, uh, offensive, uh, you know, be, be the offensive coordinator? That is hilarious to me. As you can see, my voice is still very raspy, and I apologize. First of all, Peyton Manning doesn't want to coach. That's pretty evident. But second off, what's the end game here? You know, you've already seen T. Martin come back and be a part of a coaching staff, and it ended really poorly. I'm not saying specifically for T., because, I mean, obviously the university showed him a whole lot of love when he came here as a member of the, the Baltimore Ravens for Pro Day the other day. But my point is, when you think of T. Martin now, it's almost like his legacy, not really tarnished because, again, he wasn't the head coach. He was an assistant coach. But you're going to remember that he was a part of that, that coaching staff, and it ended really, really poorly here. So there's always a risk there when you want to hire a former letterman, Scott Frost, Nebraska. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like, there's always a risk there. So it's unfortunate. That's why I don't think 
it's really paramount to remain inside the Lady Vol program to go and make this hire. The game has grown so much. The game has evolved, the, the women's basketball game. It's better now, arguably, than it's ever been. There's so many different good teams out there, but the Lady Vols as a program have not really been in that conversation. And that's why I think a change needed to be made. And you sit here, and I mean, it's tough. Kelly Harper had 40, or excuse me, Kelly Harper had four 20 win seasons. She had back to back Sweet 16 appearances, not this season. She bowed out in the second round, but um, she went to the Sweet 16 on back to back years. It's not like it was abysmal. Her overall record, I believe, was 108 and 52. She was 53 and 24 in SEC play. But with the game being as good as it's ever been, the Lady Vols were never in the conversation of being one of the best. And for this brand, for obviously there's Pat Summit and what she did, not only for Tennessee, not only for the Lady Vols, but for women's basketball. And really even beyond that, it's women's sports. What this brand, because of Pat Summit, has done for women's sports is incredible. And so, sure, no one should be leveled up to Pat Summit. Nobody's ever going to live up to what Pat Summit did. I'm not saying that, but still, the program is held to a higher standard. The program is held to a higher perspective, and it just wasn't getting it done. And so, you know, I agree with the move, and I hate that because I know Kelly Harper. I don't know her, but I know she's a good person, and I know she, you know, poured her, you know, heart, sweat, blood, tears into the program, but it just didn't work out. So I'll be intrigued to see kind of the direction that um, that Danny White wants to go. Now, again, I don't cover women's basketball. I don't cover Lady Vols. I'm not an insider. But some names and discussing with some people that, you know, might be, you know, kind of not, not in consideration, but that might be tossed around a little bit um, over the next couple of days. J.R. Payne from Colorado, uh, Colorado's head coach. Felicia Leggetti Jack, Syracuse's head coach. Uh, she has a connection to Danny White. Um, Oregon State, Ohio State head coaches uh, are also could be interesting options. Everybody's going to say Kara Lawson. I get that. But what has Kara Lawson done to prove that she can win at this level? I, I'm serious question. That's not a bash on her. I, I'm just asking. I'm just having a conversation. What has she done at the Power 5 level to prove that she could step in and take this job and run with it? Um, again, and, and, and again, the question would be, What's the end game there? Former beloved Lady Vol figure. I don't know. I, I just don't think it ends very, very, uh, I think it would end poorly than, than greatly in my opinion. So just some of my thoughts about this. Um, I, I do think that, you know, Danny, you don't make this hire. You don't, or this, this move, you don't pay a large buyout if you're not going to go and find a proven winner. Does that mean you're going to go get Gino and bring him here? No. Does that mean you're going to go get Don Staley? No. Mulkey's not coming here. But you're going to go get a proven winner in the college game. You're going to pay some money and invest and make this the right hire. Because if the Lady Vols weren't a priority, and I recognize the Lady Vols, it's it's a non-profitable sport. Nothing is a profitable sport outside of football and a little bit of men's basketball. But... Just because it's a non-profitable sport does not mean that it's not a priority. And I think if you were okay with mediocrity or if this wasn't a priority, then you would let Kelly Harper coach another year. So um, I'll be intrigued to see what's going to happen. Kelly Harper was quoted in saying uh, in, in the release uh, put out by Tennessee in the statement yesterday, quote, it has been an honor to serve at my alma mater and to coach the Lady Ball program I love so dearly. I am grateful for the opportunity my staff and I had to lead an amazing group of young women and mentor them Um, on the court, as well as provide them with skills that will benefit them far beyond the game of basketball, end quotes. Uh, Danny White said, he was, quote, after a thorough review of our women's basketball program, I've informed Kelly that we are making the change in leadership. Decisions like these are never easy to make, especially with someone who has done so much for the Lady Vols as a three-time national champion student-athlete. Her love and passion for Tennessee and Lady Vols is second to none. She has invested so much heart and soul into our program and has truly given her all for Tennessee. I thank Kelly uh, for her stewardship, for our women's basketball program, and wish her and John well in their next chapter. So, um, yeah, yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, it's going to be interesting. You had 
Holly Warlick, the coach of the team for seven years, that, that stepped up whenever Pat Summers stepped down due to health. And then you've had Kelly Harper the last five years. This should be an outside hire, in my opinion. Um, but more than anything, it should be Danny White's hire, and it should be an established coach at the Power 5 level. So we'll see. He's going to pony up. He's going to spend some money. Um, and, and, and he should because the Lady Vol brand means more than what we've seen here the last couple of years. And it's going to be a long road, and we'll see what happens. And, and you know, we'll talk about the hire whenever it's made. But uh, I, 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 don't, I don't wish anybody to be fired, but I do agree with this move. I think this is the right move from Danny White. So best of luck to Kelly Harper, um, her family, her staff, and uh, we'll see exactly where Tennessee wants to go. Um, but credit Danny White for doing the right thing, in my opinion. I uh, would love to hear your thoughts about this as well. When we come back, we got plenty of your mailbag questions to get into. We'll talk football. We'll talk men's basketball. We'll talk a little baseball. We'll talk some Cruton, all that and more. That is coming up next as we continue on here with a Tuesday Locked On Balls. I want to tell you guys about our friends over at LinkedIn Jobs. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you got to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn has all the tools uh, to find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn's got a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. It gives you access to those professionals that you can't find anywhere else. LinkedIn does all this while making the process easy and intuitive. Hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates available to choose from. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get qualified candidates within 24 hours. It's why 2.5 million small businesses are currently using LinkedIn for hiring. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That is linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions, they do apply. Your mailbag questions coming up next as we continue on with the Tuesday Locked on Balls. All right, guys, welcome back in here to your Tuesday edition of Locked on Balls. It is uh, one of my favorite times of the week. It's when we get to get into the mailbag questions that you every day or send in, and I appreciate that. Uh, we'll start here with Glock Vols. Why does Purdue and the refs have the history of refereeing ruining outcomes of games that it does? Why is it always that school? Serious question. Um, you know, Tennessee and Purdue haven't played too many different times. I know they played twice this year, but in terms of the NCAA tournament, I mean, I, I'm not looking at the box score or anything, but I mean, I remember that game and the, the controversy there was that corner three and it was Lamonte. Did he foul? Did he not foul? But I mean, at least, in, and I know that wasn't probably the only iffy call in that game, but that was the call that we remember, you know, example, that's the one play from that game I'm talking about. But I mean, that was a contested shot. And that is a, did he foul him, did he not foul him call? I mean, that's just, it is what it is. My biggest gripe with this specific game, and again, maybe I made it more than what it was on yesterday's show. I mean, Tennessee fouled him. It's not like Tennessee didn't foul him half the time. Tennessee fouled him. But it was more that the seven foot four, 300 pounder had one foul in a 40 minute basketball game. And as Rob Lewis so eloquently put it on the VolQuest podcast, he probably spent of the 40 minutes of the basketball game, 38 minutes in the lane. How in the world does that big man, most physical guy in basketball, end up with one foul? That's my big issue. You only, you have one foul, then he's able to go and, and exert more, you know, exert more effort on defense and go into rebound and all that. You got four fouls on, you can't do that. So I don't know, man. It's it's interesting. Um, you know, P Purdue and Tennessee, it feels like there's always some controversy there. And, and yeah, in football as well. You're exactly right. In football, the Music City Bowl. Um, where Jalen Wright did cross the plane, I don't know, man. It's uh, it's unique to kind of think uh, think about. Um, and I know this is a serious question that you're asking, but at least in that in that Sweet Sixteen game with with the corner three, I mean that's a bang bang play. Like that's that is a close. Like if you didn't call that a foul, it would have. It's one of those you go to review and and it stands because there's not enough to overturn it. You know what I'm saying? Like it was close. There's no reason that that Edie should have had one foul on him, you know, spending all that time in the lane when you're seven foot four, three hundred pounds. Uh, we'll go next to Andrew. What's the men's basketball roster look like next year? Uh, somebody asked. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of jumble these together. Somebody asked about scholarships. I believe that was Trevor. 
Um, I believe that was Trevor that I was going to get to here in a moment. But uh, I'm going to lump Trevor's question and Andrew's question kind of together. Scholarships for men's basketball is at 13. You look at Tennessee's you know, roster right now, who they have coming back. If everybody chose to come back now, you know, we'll see if that happens. But everybody you know, coming back, Bishop coming in, and the three that you're losing, you have two scholarships open. So you have 13 scholarships, you're losing three, adding one. You know, simple math says, you know, you, you have 11 scholarships left. So how will you choose to use those two 11, those two scholarships available? It's going to be the transfer portal, in my opinion. And we'll see who leaves this roster. Currently, you look at this roster right now, you're losing three fifth-year seniors in Dalton Connect, Josiah Jordan James, and Santiago Vescovi. Um, you're set to return Freddie DeLeon, DJ Jefferson, Jonas Adu, Zakai Ziegler, Jordan Ganey, Jabai Meshack, Toby Awaka, J.P. Estrella, Kate Phillips, Cam Carr, and you're set to bring in Bishop Boswell. But I mean, let's go, you know, let's not be naive, guys. Not all these guys are going to return. It's the nature of the transfer portal. Two of the biggest question marks right now is Freddie DeLeon, DJ Jefferson. Will those guys be a part of the rotation? <coughs> Excuse me. Will those guys be a part of things moving forward? I don't know. We'll have to see. But in the era of the transfer portal and how those guys barely played this year, wouldn't shock me whatsoever if both of those guys decide to move on. Is there another guy that might decide to move on that isn't really in that category? I don't know. Maybe. Jonas Adu is probably going to test the NBA waters and then come back, as he should. Um, but you always got to be ready, head on a swivel, to see exactly you know, who's going to leave and what's your plan uh, to replace those if needed. So hope that kind of answers the question there. Uh, we'll go to Joey. Joey says, will Tennessee ever be taken as a serious program? They've never won a big game, game crumble the spotlight, fall short every single year. I would assume this is a troll. And Joey, if this is not a troll, I don't mean any, any disrespect and I apologize, but I assume this is a troll. Um, Tennessee just played in the lead eight. That's a, that's a pretty big game. Tennessee just won a, <clears throat> excuse me, a sweet 16 game. That's that's pretty big game. Um, there are teams all across the country that are not playing in the Sweet 16, not winning. Uh, Tennessee just won your um, SEC regular season championship. It's a pretty big, pretty big game. So I think this is a troll. I won't entertain it much longer, but, I mean, Tennessee's relevant and is as relevant as it's ever been. It just came off the most accomplished season and, in my opinion, the best season in basketball history for this program. Uh, we'll move on now to Aaron. Aaron says, I don't expect Tennessee football to win the natty under Nico's first starting season, but hopeful and would love it. However, who do you think actually gets closer to holding up that trophy this year between football and baseball? It's a really good question. Um, I feel like the easy answer would be to say baseball, just because baseball has gone to the College World Series two, of the, two out of the last three years. Not that Tennessee can't get back to the College World Series this year because I love the offense and I love the options um, and I love some of the pitching, but it's going to be a grind as it always is. It, you know, obviously the the best college baseball team in the history of the sport, the 2022 Vols didn't even make it to Omaha. It's just that hard. The road is so challenging. Um, so for that reason, I'll say football again. Twelve team playoff. You can get an at large bid and not even win your conference anymore. You can lose two games and go to the expanded playoffs. Um, so for that reason alone, I'll say football, just because I think it is the most difficult thing to do in all of sports is to win a college world series in baseball. I just think the road is so challenging. So I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts on that. We'll go to Jared next. <clears throat> Excuse me. After watching Vol Club Confidential, Brazel just comes off as a hyper-focused, motivated guy to be wide receiver number one. Seems to be all about ball. Honestly, I would not be surprised if he becomes the other starter instead of Thornton or Webb. How does he look? Uh, how does he look to you compared to the other two? Wouldn't surprise me at all. I mean, guys, think about this. I mean, Tennessee brought him in to do just that. Tennessee brought him in to take the place of Dante Thornton, and it's not that they're giving up on Dante Thornton. But the, the results overall, they need to go out and get a guy. And, and they did that. And so you're not going out there and allocating NIL you know resources to bring a guy in just for depth, right? And so, you know, wouldn't shock me whatsoever if that's the case either. <clears throat> um, 
as far as how he's looked, he's had a really good spring. Uh, I think he got off to kind of a slow start. That's understandable. You know, first week in a new system and all that. But I think he's had a really good spring. But Dante Thornton's had a really good spring as well. So I love that battle. I'm intrigued to see how that battle ends in spring. And then ultimately, it's going to carry over into fall camp and and seeing which one. But if you're Tennessee, it's you're in a really good spot because you are creating some depth and you're going to have some playmakers that can rotate in for sure. Uh, but I'm excited to see Chris Brazel. He comes in with a lot of success at Tulane. Tulane, I get it. Uh, but that's more on his resume than Thornton came in at this time last year at Oregon. And we'll uh, finish off this segment. We'll get to more of your questions in segment three, but we'll finish off this segment with Darius. And kind of on that note, <clears throat> with having so much talent at wide receiver position, do you think that the underclassmen opt to stay knowing that they'll have the opportunity to eventually play with Nico? Brew and Thornton will be out of eligibility, so that leaves the outsides open. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, you know, Chris Brazel will certainly be a starter for this team, if not this year, next year. He'll play this year regardless. Um, Thornton will be gone. Brew will be gone. So it kind of, you think about Chaz Nimrod and Caleb Webb, and that that's really what I'm, what I'm kind of pondering here because that second transfer portal window is going to open April the 16th. And so do those guys still think that they can crack the, the depth chart, the two deep, be in the rotation next year for this upcoming football season, and also know that the point that you brought out, that you're going to have you're going to have two wide receiver spots open on the outside the following year. Do they view it like that, or do they see Braylon Staley, who's more of a slot, but Mike Matthews, kind of breathing down their neck as a true freshman and a five-star? I'll be interested to see. I mean, I think the conversation – is about Chaz Nimrod and Caleb Webb more than anybody else because, you know, those two freshmen aren't leaving. Um, Brazel's not leaving. You know, Thornton, maybe, you know, uh, again, never say never. Gerald Mincy left. Um, I'm intrigued to see. Maybe, potentially, because Nico is all that, but you should never feel safe on a roster because they are always going to over-recruit you or recruit above your head. So we'll see what happens. I, I am super intrigued to see what the second transfer portal window looks like and how it can affect Tennessee, especially with transfers who have already, uh, you know, come to Tennessee via somewhere else. All right, we'll get to more of your questions, more of your comments, more of your concerns as we continue on with the mailbag portion of the show coming up next right here on Lockdown Balls. I want to say about our friends over at eBay Motors, passion, drive, patience, the formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and leveled up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, this is all skits and LED headlights and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money is back. Because of eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home the huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Ellers Bottoms only, exclusions apply, eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. More of your mailbag questions coming up next as we continue on with the Tuesday Lockdown Balls. All right, guys, welcome back in here to a Tuesday edition of Lockdown Balls. More of your mailbag questions, they start now. Tyler says, I vote we talk about the good things that we saw and we can build on. Estrella fought his arse off in, in a mismatch. Ganey continues to provide a spark on offense, and the guys didn't quit. What say you? Yeah, man, um, J.P. Estrella, dude, like he played more in the Elite Eight game against the National Player of the Year than he played all season. 15 minutes. Um, he wasn't perfect, don't get me wrong, but they like him a lot, and they like Kate Phillips a lot. And you know what you got in Jonas to do. And if Toby Awaka can learn just to not foul every single play, Tennessee's front court, it's going to be really good next year. And so that's something to build on. Uh, Jordan Ganey, yeah, I don't think Jordan Ganey is ever going to be a guy that is consistently leading your team in points. He's going to be a spark. He will show up, and then he won't show up, in my opinion. That's just kind of who he is. But the back half of the season... The last couple of weeks of the season, I, I'm with you, man. He, he provided some sparks. A couple of big three-pointers in the first half the other day, um, you know, for Tennessee. And, and of course, you got Zakai and um, 
there's still a like Cam Carr is a guy that I think is going to be really, really good. Nobody's going to be Dalton Connect. But this is still a really, really good team and a good nucleus. I was talking to my buddy the other day. Shout out Oz. He was like, the nucleus is there for a Sweet 16 next year. Maybe. Um, I'm not saying that's not true. But we just know how college basketball is and how it's individual matchups and all that. Um, but I, I, I'm going to like this team coming back. And I think Rick Barnes is really, really going to like this team as well. And I think that's why he's motivated to continue and coach. And um, he still enjoys it. Still enjoys it a whole lot. Let's go to let's go to Matt. Matt says, question for Twitter Tuesday. Hope it doesn't happen anytime soon. This kind of leads me into this, you know, the nice little transition here. Um, in case that time that Barnes does retire, uh, who do you say his do you think he'll have a say in who his successor is? Somebody like Kim English, or do you think it's all Danny White? Side note, Barnes is absolutely the best basketball coach in UT history, and the people who disagree are in denial. 100% agree with that. Um, Bruce Pearl had a great run here at Tennessee. His 2010 team that went to the Elite Eight was a solid team. This team would kick that team's butt 10 times out of 10. Just would. Um, Barnes has also had... The Grand Admiral team that, you know, had a program record was a 31 regular season wins. Yeah, Barnes is easily the best coach in, in Tennessee history, and I'm with you there. Now, it, when he does retire, hopefully it's not anytime soon, your question is, will he have a say in who his successor is? I'm sure he'd have a say, but at the end of the day, Danny Watt's going to make that call. Danny Watt's going to hire who he wants to. But I do think Kim English would be a guy that's considered for sure. He knows the culture. He knows the recruiting landscape. He knows the NIL framework. Um, he would be a guy that would be you know close to the top of my list if I was making that call. But will Rick Barnes make that make that offer, make that job, make that hire? No. Danny White will, but I'm sure Danny White will use him as a sounding board. But it's going to be Danny White's call eventually, whenever that is. Uh, let's go to Ross. Ross says... Who was Rick Barnes and the staff looking at either in the high school ranks or in the transfer portal to build on the success of this year? Yeah, it's really early for Tennessee. I mean, granted, there's people on support staff that are always watching the portal, who's going in, who's going out, all that type of stuff. But, I mean, the focus has been on this NCAA tournament run. So that type of chatter will continue to pick up steam this week. Um, I don't have any names, but Tennessee needs a wing player. Tennessee needs a shooter. Okay. Um but Tennessee needs to go and find a wing player for sure that, that, that can shoot the basketball. If Jonas somehow stayed in the NBA draft process and left, then you would need to go get a big man. I just don't see that happening. I don't see that being the case. I think Jonas will go and test the waters and then come back to, to Tennessee. So go get a shooter, get a wing player, you know, best available top situation. Um, Josiah Jordan James, man, they don't grow on trees. I think Jamai Meshack will, will kind of go into that stretch four role next year. Uh, versatility with his defense, um, you know, all that type of stuff. But I would say wing and shoot shooter for sure. And, and again, maybe another big man, but but Tennessee loves the big men on their roster right now. As I mentioned, J.P. Estrella, Cade Phillips. So I would say that'd be kind of less of, a, of a, a priority right now. Let's go to Trevor. What are the scholarship numbers? Okay, I already mentioned that. Um, let's go to James. James says, I am extremely concerned about the pitching situation for Tennessee. Should I be beam? Hasn't pitched like the first round pick. Russell was the rock solid guy that you could count on. But at this point, do we even see him again this year? Elbow forearm soreness is always scary. I think one of the freshmen Dallas would be my preference has to step up, but that hasn't happened yet. Yeah. James, I agree with you, man. One of these two freshmen a Derek Schaefer. Matthew Dallas has got to step up if not both of them, so they can have those guys in the bullpen to rely on or throw them out there for a spot start. Um, both those guys pitched in game one of Tennessee's series against Georgia, and they looked horrible. I think uh, Schaefer gave up five runs and ending in a third. Matthew Dallas gave up two runs and an ending in, in two thirds or something. I, I don't know. It was really, really bad. They've not gotten off to the starts of their collegiate careers that I think that everybody expected. Um Russell, I do believe you'll see him again, but it won't be for a few weeks. And even in that, you're going to have to do short spurts and take your time there. And Beam has not pitched good in SEC play. I wrote about in the three two one the other day over at VolQuest.com, but I'm worried about the pitching too, for sure. Tennessee's ranked number four right now in the country. 
Tennessee's overranked right now. Doesn't mean Tennessee's not talented. That means Tennessee can't get the Omaha. That means Tennessee can't overcome it. But right now, Tennessee's overranked, in my opinion. I would have Tennessee about like seven or eighth. Um, so, James, I'm with you, man. I'm I'm worried about the pitching, too. I think that's absolutely fair. Let's go to Braden. Do you trust Keith, Khalifa Keith, to be RB2 until Cam Seldon gets back? Right now, no. You still have two weeks left to spring practice and two scrimmages. Can you prove that you can be that? Or Deshaun Bishop. Deshaun Bishop's on even playing field in this conversation, in my opinion. Can either one of you guys prove that you could be that guy that says, hey, you don't need to go to the transfer portal because I'm here. These next two weeks of spring practice is, is going to be just that. Can Khalifa Keith or Deshaun Bishop prove that Tennessee doesn't need to go out to the transfer portal and find a running back? Because right now I would say no, but you still have some time. And then finally, we will end with my buddy Garrett. Garrett says, top three players that would commit today if it were National Signing Day. Um, yeah, I'm not going to pretend like I'm, these are not crystal balls. This is not an RPM pick, but this is just my opinion. If National Signing Day was today, Ethan Utley would have been on that list, but he actually committed last week. Um, I would say Cam Sparks, in-state four-star wide receiver. Rodarius Jackson, in-state four-star wide receiver. I still like the balls with those two guys. And then I would go four-star safety, Shady Hayward. Those would be my three guys right now. Another question from Garrett. Biggest risers up the depth chart after the spring scrimmage. It's just early. Monday was the first practice after a four-day week, a four-day break for Easter. Um, but I would say a lot of guys you're hearing chatter about right now, Jalen McMurray, transfer from Temple at quarterback. He's your number three corner right now. Christian Conyer might be your number four corner, kind of bracketed with, uh, with uh, Jordan Matthews. But Christian Conyer's had a really good spring. And then Jeremiah T. Lander, not that he was down the depth chart, but it sounds like Jeremiah T. Lander is taking advantage of all the reps. Keenan Peely's missing a little bit. They're being careful with him. Elijah Simmons is not there. Or Elijah Herring is not there. Aaron Carter's not full go. So it sounds like Jeremiah T. Lander is making the most of that situation and getting a whole lot of reps. So um, that's how I'd answer that. All right, that's going to do it here for this edition of Locked On Vols. Again, guys, I know a lot of y'all hate when I do this, but I'm sorry my voice sounds so bad. Um, when you talk for a living, it's really hard for your voice to get better. And um, hopefully in the next day or two, I'll be back to full strength. But uh, until then, we're just kind of having to get through it. But I appreciate you guys sticking with me. And I uh, appreciate you guys always listening to Locked On Vols, making it your first listen, your first watch, wherever you get your podcast. We'll talk with Josh Ward of Award Wednesday. We'll continue to follow the Lady Vols coaching search, uh, roster management for hoops, and, of course, spring football practice, all that and more right here on Lockdown Balls. Appreciate you guys, and we will talk again tomorrow.